thing. Not the anthology, there's a link. Well, this book, Songs My Enemy Taught Me, which is my own book, and it's a book about um, my life story. And just to retrack a bit, the reason um, I wrote this book was because of Carmina Moss Oliver and She Growls. Um, because they invited me to write um, poems over ten pages in the anthology, and I wrote one poem. <laughs> um, so those of you who don't know who I am, I founded the National Youth Slams of this country 18 years ago. It's called Slam Ambassadors. Woo! Woo! And I founded it, trying to find kids that were like myself, who were growing up in the ends or the ghettos or the social projects, um, who um, have a burning passion to create, but absolutely no access at all to the arts. Because access costs money. Um, and access costs the kind of cultural identity, which means that you go to the theatre. We went to the fucking pub, love. <laughs> I wrote my first play and I'd never been to the theatre, I wrote my first poems, I'd never met a poet, got it all from song lyrics. Um, so I did that for 18 years, trying to return the voices of those who are most silenced in our community, helping them to retrieve their own voices and providing platforms for them. And then about a year and a half ago, I got to a point where I, was, I just couldn't continue. I had um, experienced the death of somebody I really loved, our friend Pace. And it was a moment in my life where I, where I was like, well, what the fuck next? What do I do? Do I continue? At which point Carmina um, emailed me and I thought, I'm going to tell people what happened to me. So I'm going to do something really that I've done, only done twice before. Once, once for the BBC and once here and once, I think I was drunk somewhere. <laughs> um, and that's to read the whole poem. The poem is called Songs My Enemy Taught Me and it's the story of me um, growing up when I was five years old. I come from the northwest of the UK and my mum and dad lost their jobs and we were taken away from our home and put up in Blackpool, which is bleak enough, isn't it? We were put up in a bed and breakfast not unlike the hotel we're staying in, Carmina. <laughs> I opened the door to the hotel room, it was 1973, I'm telling you, I was like... <laughs> Um, I put up in this hotel and it was coming up toward Christmas and there was just me, my brother, my mum and my dad, the landlords and three soldiers in the bed and breakfast. It gets to Christmas Eve and I remember my dad picking me up and he was holding me like that and we were dancing around to Gilbert O'Sullivan, long story. Um, and it was like a really magical moment in my life. It was a really happy moment. And then they took me off, to, took me to bed, tucked me into my bed and everybody went to sleep and then the soldiers came calling and they raped me and that continued for a long period of time. Oh, trigger warning. I always forget the trigger warning, sorry about that, because I believe that if you feel the trigger, it's probably because you're holding the gun. So remember, if something like, about this upsets you, allow it to, that's okay. We're not going to do the entire poem because I've told you the background, but we're going to join it the morning after. And it's a canto, a little bit like yours. A canto, for those who don't know, is a really fucking long poem. <laughs> <laughs> Separated into distinct parts. The distinct parts are actually the cantos. Um, and it's along an extended metaphor. And the metaphor I use is war, because they were soldiers. One. Silence was a song my enemy taught me. Two. The bed is cold, and my teeth are abandoned buildings, and somewhere there is the smell of something burning, a book, a flag, a letter. In my room, at the top of the seaside hotel, there is a single bed with a white sheet. I cannot think of anything to write on it. The bed is a slowly developing photograph. Here's us around the dinner table. We are smiling like carved meat. No one notices that the daughter is eating herself. Here's you walking home from school. Your shadow walks behind you as if ashamed. Even the trees whisper about you. You have embarrassed the wind. And here's him, and him, and him. 
a family portrait, successful, double folding their uniforms and ironing their smiles, catching children delivered from the conveyor belt of their wives' wombs and holding them up to the bare light bulb to bless. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. They are boys. And here are the stairs. And here, the long corridor you're afraid to walk along. Perhaps it is your three. My womb is a war zone after everything is taken, after the soldiers have left, spitting into the palms of their hands, after the shelves have been emptied and only sell nothing, after the nothing gathers in great mountains at the sides of the streets, after the streets are running with hungry ghosts, after women's skins are slung from washing lines, after children write their names in the dust that once were their fathers, I carry the war in 